If you fitted an auto bed leveling probe to your 3D printer, but you're struggling to get it dialed in, this video is going to explain all, including the new Marlin Z Probe Offset Wizard. An auto bed leveling system such as a BL Touch or an Easy ABL can be a tremendous addition to a 3D printer, particularly one with a warped bed. The trouble is that a lot of people have trouble getting them to work exactly as they should because they struggle with correctly setting the probe to nozzle offset. The Marlin firmware is always being improved and made more accessible, including recent additions such as the Auto Build Marlin plugin. Another great addition is the Probe Z Offset Wizard, which has been brought to my attention by viewer Nathan Doyle. In this video, we're going to go over all things Probe Offset, including trying out the new wizard so we can dial in those perfect first layers. The first ready printer that I owned with auto bed leveling was the Prusa Mark III, and it produced very good first layers, even on quite difficult prints. I've since added ABL systems to a range of my printers and made a bunch of video guides about the process. Apart from the convenience, the reason I find it essential on many printers is that a lot of them come with a warped bed. A perfectly flat bed is really not that hard to level, but in the case of a warped bed, there's nothing you can do with the bed springs that can prevent the first layer from being inconsistent across the build platform, as shown in this example here on an Ender 3 warped bed. What auto bed leveling does is probe a series of points in a grid on top of the build surface. In each location, measuring the vertical difference between them, which allows the firmware to build up a 3D mesh of the build surface. This means that as the layers are deposited on the build surface, the nozzle of the printer will be moved vertically up and down to ride the contours of any imperfections. When ABL is properly dialed in, the result of this is perfect first layers, even on a build surface that is far from perfect. I say dialed in because unless your nozzle is the tip of your probe, like in the Creality CR6, your ABL probe will be mounted off to the side of the nozzle, and this is what we call the probe offset. If you don't accurately tell the firmware your probe offset, the whole system is going to break down. Let's demonstrate. On this end of 3, the BL Touch is mounted 43mm to the left of the nozzle. When I try to probe 10mm in from the left hand side, the probe misses the bed and instead the nozzle collides. This time around, the firmware knows the probe offset, so when it tries to probe 10 in from the edge, that point is actually reached. In configuration.h of Marlin, we have a section to explain the nozzle to probe offset for X, Y and Z. The diagram down here is actually quite good, so let's expand on it with a real world example. On this end of 3, we're going to remove the part cooling fan duct for greater clarity, and we're also going to make things a little bit darker. Hidden underneath the heater block is the tip of the nozzle, and if we project down vertically to the bed, the tip of the BL Touch probe. We divide the bed into 4 sections by running horizontal and vertical lines through the path of the nozzle. And we can see from my probe, it's sitting in the lower left quadrant. So how do we work out its offset? Let's start with X, and we can see that the probe is to the left of the center point, therefore its offset is negative. Specifically in this case, X is negative 43 millimeters. Now we'll calculate Y, and we can see that towards the front of the printer is negative, and towards the top is positive. In my case, the probe tip is 9 millimeters in front of the nozzle, giving me a Y offset of minus 9. Combine the two measurements together, and my probe offset for X and Y is minus 43, minus 9. Now that you understand this system, you can find your exact offset by using digital calipers or a ruler to measure the nozzle to probe offset for both X as well as Y, although sometimes measuring Y can be a little bit tricky. If you're finding it difficult to measure, quite often when printing an ABL mount, There'll be some sort of instructions or labels, and if you match them to the parts that you've printed, it will tell you the exact offsets for X and Y. As previously mentioned, we can enter the offsets for X and Y directly into the firmware by searching for nozzle to probe offset in configuration.h of Marlin. In newer versions of Marlin, we can also use M851 to directly set the values as shown in the examples. 
just remember to save afterwards with M500. Finally, on the LCD menu, if we come to configuration, advanced settings, and then probe offsets, we can also enter our values here. Once again, for them to be permanent, we need to store settings to save them afterwards. So we've set our probe to nozzle offsets for X and Y, but what about the Z offset? And what does that actually even mean? Our ABL probe has to sit higher than the nozzle or it will collide with parts as we print them. The BL touch gets around this by extending the probe only when it's needed and the proximity sensor is calibrated to trigger a few millimeters from the bed so it and the nozzle don't collide with the build surface. The probe Z offset is the difference in vertical height from the point at which the probe triggers and the tip of the nozzle. And for most types of probe, this is going to be a negative value because the trigger point is lower than the tip of the nozzle. Probe Z offset will vary on every printer, even with the same type of ABL sensor because of variations in the height in which it's mounted. If we were to ignore the vertical difference between the probe point and the nozzle by leaving the Z offset at zero, we'll find that after homing that our print begins in mid-air. The first layer won't adhere properly and the print will fail, so setting the Z offset is imperative. Correctly calculating the probe Z offset can be confusing, but in the latest builds of Marlin, we have a new wizard to assist us. If we come to configuration underscore adv.h and search for probe offset wizard, we'll find the appropriate section where we can uncomment to enable this feature. The only other parameter is probe offset start and this can be left on the default minus four in most cases. After compiling and flashing the firmware on the Marlin LCD, if we come to configuration, advanced settings, probe offsets, we'll see the new entry for Z probe wizard. Before we start the wizard, however, we wanna manually heat up the nozzle to be warm, but not so hot that filament will ooze out. For PLA, something like 150 degrees is good, and for the bed, we want to set it to our regular printing temperature to account for any thermal expansion. In my case for PLA, that's 60 degrees. Once we're up to temp, we can make sure the end of the nozzle is clean by removing any loose filament with pliers or some needle nose tweezers. We can now return to the probe offset menu and click on Z probe wizard. And when we click on this, the process starts by homing the printer. Once the printer has finished homing for X, Y, and Z, it will go back to the wizard menu. We have options for different distance increments and I recommend starting on one millimeter. We turn the dial to the left and this will move the printer down in one millimeter steps and we stop when the nozzle is just above the bed where we then click and move to one of the finer increments. From this point, we want to introduce a regular piece of paper and by using the 0.1 or 0.025 finer increments, keep moving the nozzle down until it just squeezes the paper in between the nozzle and the bed. On the wizard menu, we can see the offset is being updated in real time. And when we go to done, we can see that the Z offset has been set automatically. All we need to do to finish the process now is to come up a couple of menus and click on store settings. So our Z offset is maintained after we turn off the printer. So we need a test print, and in my case, I'm using the G-code generated from my calibration website. Just fill out the details for your printer and then click download G-code. The generator will create G-code to spread five single layer thick squares around your build platform. And this is a great test for our Z offset. There's also diagrams and reference images down the bottom to help us calculate the perfect amount of squish. I started the print and it was immediately clear that rather than printing in mid-air that the Z offset was already quite close. When using the wizard I had set the nozzle a little bit too close to the piece of paper and that had given me a little bit too much squish. I held down the ECODA knob on the LCD to bring up the live probe Z offset menu which allowed me to lift the nozzle very slightly in real time and that gave me a better amount of squish for the remaining squares. This live adjustment menu is only available if you uncomment define baby step Z probe offset in configuration underscore adv.h. And a reminder that after the print is finished, you'll need to save your updated Z offset by storing settings in the LCD menu. In summary, I would say the Z offset wizard was intuitive and easy to use 
with great results on the first attempt. It's a welcome addition to the ABL workflow. If the auto bed leveling on your 3D printer isn't quite performing as it should be, particularly the amount of first layer squish, then it's worth double checking your three probe offset measurements. Special thanks to all the people who contribute to the development of Marlin to make it more accessible for beginners and more powerful for experienced users too. If you think this new system is going to be pretty good, let me know in the comments, or maybe you've got an even better way of setting your Z-Probe offset. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.